me, love me, love me, say you do. Ding, 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 ding. Let me fly away with you. Ding, 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 ding. For my love is like the wind. Ding, 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 ding. And wild is the wind. Oh, wild is the wind. You touch me. Ding, 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 I hear the sound of mandolins. You kiss me, dang, 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 with your kiss, my life begins. Oh, your spring to me. All frogs to me. Don't you know your frog itself? Hi, and welcome to the CM Kozumin Frog Extravaganza. <laughs> Hello everyone, the never-ending All Flogs, All Frogs, Clayed by Clayed Mega Review continues. I don't know how I got myself into this stuff, to be honest, I mean, it just doesn't end. There are over 650 slides and this is part 3, where we attempt to review every group of frogs to exist on this earth so it's a herculean undertaking so let's get into it without further ado but before beginning let me just remind you the few uh, cosman rules number one is please consider supporting me on patreon.com slash cmcosman and also please consider supporting atar prometheum for their contribution to our oops what did i do no 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 Oh my, okay. So also please consider supporting Atar Prometheum for their contribution to the intro of this video. Alright, so the last time we left, we'd actually come a long, long way. I mean, we'd gone through all the all these slides about frog diversity and we'd covered the ancestral groups such as Archaeobatrachia and Mesobatrachia and we'd reached Neobatrachia which contains most of the modern groups. It's a huge, huge groups. We had reviewed almost all the toads and their relatives and all the weird things. So if you want to see these, you should go and watch the earlier videos. We had also watched the Buffonidae group. We'd also covered them comprehensively. And then we had stopped at the juncture at which we had reached the Centrolin Lenidae subgroup family of the Hyloidea mega family of the Neobatrachia mega clade. I mean, these names, the names of the clades, the levels don't make sense anymore because it's all cladistics now. So let me just go to full screen and let us continue our amazing review with the glass frogs now these are the famous transparent frogs everyone sees everyone now and then on social media you know in some of these accounts like this you won't believe these creatures and shit but these are actually all real in fact i think their weirdness is difficult to overstate what happens is when they're sleeping all the blood uh, somehow collects itself at the creature's liver so they even look more transparent and you can see all their organs and everything they're just very very strange creatures their bones also seem to be transparent but i don't know how that works maybe they have a sort of light refracting covering but anyways these are a, this is an enormous group and you know they're also notable for parental care they lay their eggs and they kind of take good care of their eggs and this group unless i'm mistaken is mostly a 
Southeast Asian group, although probably it has some representatives elsewhere too. I mean, they look like these like little lemon shorbe drops of these like candy or something. They're really ridiculous looking. But so let's go and review a few of these central in Lenidae glass frogs. I mean, you got some pretty ordinary forms such as centralina heloderma. These guys also kind of change color and change their opacity by the time of the day. As I mentioned before, at night the blood collects in the liver somehow, so they get even more transparent. And this is centralina elex with its like weird inscribed eyes. And then you got a giant in this group, a comparative titan, which is Centralina geckoidea, the flabby gecko boy glass frog thing. As you can see, it has taken the characters you've seen in this frog or this frog, but because it's kind of gigantic comparatively, it looks like a weird rubber toy, a separate thing of its own. And this is another view. It's very notable also for its gigantic hands and feet. And I don't know, maybe it helps it glide somehow, but once again, it's a, it's a bizarre side group of a little known clade. And then you got the genus Cochranella, which is like slightly different. But I mean, what can I say about these things? They look like these amazing crystal works from Venice, especially Murano. They look like weird computer renders they look like they've been created by mid journey or some other ai shit to be honest then you got the very crowded genus nymphra nymphargus which contains many 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 species including pink brown dark green and yellow ones and to make things more complicated they also change colors sometimes here's a representative nymphragus anomalous and once again these colors in their native habitat you know, on a white sheet of paper, they look very weird and alien. On these, like, blue backgrounds, they look very weird and alien. But in their real-life habitats, these frogs are really well camouflaged. Their tadpoles are also kind of strange. They are long and eel-like and comparatively big compared to their parents. So there. You then have the genus Vitreorana. Vitreo probably means glass, so it means glass frog something. Then you have the genus Hyalinobatrachium, which is kind of more splint, spindly limbed and kind of like lankier. But once again, it has the same body plan, but it's kind of stretched it towards new and unusual extremes. Then you got this genus, Ikakogi Tyrona, which is once again a flabby, fat, big limbed form. And these guys also have these like nipple like protuberances in their armpits. I mean, if we kind of go back. The gigantic centralino geckoidea also had them here. I don't know what these are for. Maybe the males have them in order to hold the females or something. I mean, when I look at these guys, I don't see any of those nipples here. But maybe they're not just visible or maybe these genera just don't have them. But here it is. Ikakogi Tyrona. If you know what these nipple things are used for, please let me know in the comments section. And then... We reach the Ceratophridae family, which contains the very famous Pac-Man frogs and all their relatives. Now, there are actually quite a number of these Pac-Man frogs, and like they're all very derpy and dumpy, and these like unstoppable eating machines, to be honest. I mean, you got the famous Ceratophris genus, which is commonly encountered in the pet trade these days. And these frogs are usually featured in these kind of cruel and heartless feeder videos now okay i know that in nature it's like a rule for one creature to eat another and i can't deny that but it's one thing to have this and it's another thing to like turn it into content for entertainment it's kind of sadistic and kind of pornographic to be honest but anyway these are the species of ceratophrys ceratophrys cranwelli ceratophrys cornuta ceratophrys ornata and this guy fantasy this is probably a hybrid of two different genuses and this is a very cool image but whoever prepared it needs to know that species names are not capitalized here is another wild picture of ceratophrys cornuta by the way i mean in wildlife these guys kind of look more wild and rugged whereas in the pet trait they kind of look like little toys 
But there's no getting around the fact that these are like ridiculous looking and exaggerated creatures. As you can see from this like old early, I think early 1800s or maybe 1700s art. What's this date? 1884, so quite late. Well, I don't know. It's like just such a fantastic image. And don't even get me started about this guy. It's just, uh, look at this. Imagine sending this as a message to your significant other. How would they react? And also, it the hands kind of look like the hands and feet of a little man. Let's look at some real Ceratophrys frogs. Hmm, they don't look too much like little men. Anyways, I don't know. And here's the famous Ceratophrys ornata, the eater of everything. The famous fat Jabba the hot frog. By the way, these guys really do eat everything. I mean, I used to think that, you know, in these cruel feeder videos, they like throw them a mouse or something and they really eat them. But I always used to think that this is like an artifact of captive raising. But actually, in the wild too, they eat almost everything. And... By the way, these are mostly South American frogs, if I'm not mistaken. So here there are many, actually, research papers dealing with the incidence of, like, for example, so there's like a newly metamorphosed Cranwelly Ceratophrys frog eating another frog in recorded in wildlife. So in the annals of science writing, there's a kind of genre called, known as a short note, or a kind of nature observation article in which people write just these like weird little details they saw and the purpose is to get them on rec record but I think these articles are more fun to read than these like big like career making classification schemes or other forms of this like extensive science research this is just nature raw in front of your eyes so here are some excerpts from these like such nature observation papers we saw what this was about in here you see Ceratophrys cornuta eating a wild form of rodent some sort of a mouse and in the picture B you have an adult female consuming a smaller frog of the Rhinella spe species so this is like a more like regular toad if you watch the previous video, you actually would see my deep dive into the genus Rhinella, and they're pretty diverse and weird as well. In fact, according to this table, the Rhinella is a Rhinella margaritifera, which has this like weird helmet-like projections. So, like, let me just go back a bit and show you what it was. So the Ceratophrys toad was actually eating. Where where was I? No, not this was actually devouring a specimen of this guy, Rhinella margaritifera, with these like helmet-like projections. What's interesting is that in not even these projections could stop it being eaten by the voracious monster that is Ceratops Ceratophrys. It's always a challenge to pronounce this friss thing, and many frog genera have this thing. So what else do they have? Like they have um, snails, crustaceans, spiders, mites, millipedes, grasshoppers, bugs. I don't know what heteroptera is. Probably like something like an earwing. Flies, fly larvae, ants, wasps, beetles, unidentified arthropods, and then it goes all the way down. Anolis lizards, some other frogs, lots of frogs actually. Unidentified snake, some sort of uh, rodent unidentified mice and the list goes on in fact there are tables tabulated of these frogs and their diets and you can see that there are instances of them eating birds fish mammals but what's really interesting is that they have a strong uh, tendency for cannibalism so it's like that goddamn show dammer i told you we're gonna watch cm kozaman on youtube and you can leave. And it's just a meme. But uh, to be honest, this Dammer show, like those frog feeder videos, I think there was a boundary being crossed there. It seemed like, I mean, this is a horrible murder. And it seems like the show was kind of turning it into a, like a reality TV pornography. And the guy even won an award for portraying this killer. 
and I don't know like it certainly is legal but I think it's unethical and like if I w if I portray the ruthless killer and won an award for it I would just reject the award because you know the relatives of people he has killed are still alive anyways that ends our meme and tangent about dammer and don't watch that shit or better still pirate that shit so that Netflix doesn't make any money off of it anyways the dammer meme creature here is actually the cutest species of pac-man frog Kako. it's cacophris pierotti you usually see pictures of these animals in the pet trade and in in captive breeding conditions they look even more dumpier and cuter they look like these japanese cartoons uh, to be honest i would like to have this thing as a pet too and i don't know it would be difficult to feed it live prey all the time but i think if you like just wriggle a piece of meat in front of them they would eat that too so it's not that difficult to feed them with more ethically sourced sources of protein let us say anyways that was kakko the cute and dumpy looking pac-man frog and then you got even the cuter looking lepidobatracus frog you usually know these guys from memes i mean it's the famous frog in the it's it's wednesday my dudes meme and it's been adapted into different languages including french this frog has these like barb like projections on its lower jaw and they really put on these like hissy antics when someone threatens them they walk they hiss they shout they're really cute and weird creatures but actually in in real life they look like this so they're more like a, a more insidious and well camouflaged sort of frog and here is uh, a lepidobatracus a related species so not laevis but ilansen ilanensis devouring a hapless other sort of frog and if you look at these guys skeletons the the mouth structure is like obscene it has got these like backward projection projecting things <sighs> yes i i had to yawn upon seeing the big mud but i mean like many frogs the the skeleton of this guy is just bizarre i mean there are these like backward projection projecting flanges from the head and the mouth is just enormously wide and the head is just like a some few sheets of bones now it recalls me this prehistoric amphibian called diplocaulus which also has these like enormous spikes around its head it, this thing has traditionally been reconstructed as a kind of like double like t-shaped head creature but maybe it was like an engulfing engulfing feeder i don't know i mean there are also reconstructions where these flanges are somehow smoothly attached to the rest of the body but we just don't know it could go anyway to be honest but i wouldn't think it <sighs> extraordinary if this had also like some sort of big big mouthed frog dumpy vibe about it and then you got the little known family cycloramphidae represented here by cycloramphus boraciensis also thoropa miliaris so these are basically related frogs that don't have these extreme specializations for feeding but there are like small things that set them apart from different frogs such as the placement of the ear hole and in this particular species there are these like bumps on the side like spikes and then you got the aromobatidae family which has many many species i mean allobates is one example and these guys have a sort of paternal or maternal care for their tadpoles the tadpoles live attached to their mother's body and unlike some other frogs which have hundreds and thousands of tadpoles these guys have only a few and they raise them they're good parents and then you got anomaloglossus in this family also a golden like small bormeliad living species then you got aramobates ericsonae which is another related genus what can i say then you got i mean there in these groups there are many similar genera of little tiny tiny frogs such as Manofrin Venezuelan Venezuelensis from South America, and then you reach the money shot, the poison shot, the venom shot, the famous poison arrow frog group, Dendrobatidae. Now, before moving on to cover these guys, I mean, you should look back at these like 
weird other like not so their species and you can see that these actually represent a, a spectrum bridging these large big eating frogs and and then just the other frogs basically this is the dendrobatoidea group and this is the proper dendrobatidea family so there are like not so quite poison arrow frogs here and then there are the poison arrow frogs here exemplified here by philobates terribilis the famous like deadliest frog of them all and in many sources it says that these are like probably size by size the most poisonous animal on the planet although maybe the blue ring octopi could give them a run for their money but like when we were kids me and my friends we read in a book where that stated that a, one of these frogs could kill like 20 elephants or something now in this other source i plagiarized it says that it's enough to kill between 10 to 20 humans or up to two elephants a anyway they're very deadly and the venom is manufactured as these creatures eat up little ants and then use them to synthesize some sort of uh, venom basically and then if you raise them in captive conditions they're actually they're actually not went poisonous so so there they have a sort of biochemistry wizardry going on but they're like really beautiful looking creatures the, the way the poison works is that okay so in your nerve cells there's something called a sodium channel basically it opens and then sodium and water get into your nerves and then the nerve fires basically that's how it works now normally this is triggered by electrical impulses but what these frogs do is they bind to this gate and they lock it open so after the molecule binds here it doesn't even need to like you can't bring it out and the nerve remains forever open and as a, as a result what happens is that like you go and your you you basically give out a breath and you can never breathe in again so it's like a very very painful way to die what happens with these batrachotoxins the poisons used by these poison arrow frogs is that natives use them for hunting basically they rub the they rub their poison darts on them and then they shoot them at monkeys or something and they're terribly effective like one impact and the animal just drops that especially with these golden frogs some other frogs whose poisons are not as potent they just have to roast them and like kill the animal to get the poison but with these guys you can just rub it on them and you know leave it alive and this is one of the amazon indians using the famous Poof! poison dart and in fact where else but america in where else but america they have kind of changed uh, they've appropriated this and they they are now making and selling these amazing blowguns with like this people use them to hunt and i think it looks really cool and obviously these are not dipped in like some sort of custom poison you even have like standards which just people aim for little birds or little squirrels and just shoot them but i think like this is one of the nice things about the states that they can innovate everything and here it says nick p florida where else well crafted and superior product this is a high quality well crafted and accurate blowgun america what a country anyways let's look at some brightly colored and fascinating poison arrow frogs then you got dendrobates levcomelas melas means black levcos means yellow so it's the yellow black poison arrow frog and it's just a perfect smooth work of art then you got all these other dendrobates i'm not even, go even gonna begin classifying them but they look like strawberries blueberries all sorts of poison berries that make your heart stop with their beauty you also have like like purely black or purely gray forms apparently and I think this is just variety in this one single species and it turns out probably these can be classified as other species I don't know like it's all a bit moot at this point and then you got this other genus Amiriga which is kind of larger and it's uh, poison is less potent 
And then you got this form called Oophaga, which comes in many, many fascinating species. And each species has many fascinating color morphs. But it's just like a candy store to look, look at. In fact, when I was preparing this slideshow, I was working at a local cafe. And the cafe owner, like, I'm friends with the guy and... Like, he couldn't believe these were real frogs. And I had to, like, go out on a limb and explain to them that, like, actually, yes, these are real. And the colors are this bright for poison advertising purposes, whatever. But even when, like, he believed in the existence of poison arrow frogs, he thought some pictures were, like, fake or they must be photoshopped or something. But no, it's all real, all natural. Here's another genus, Ranitomea, different species. Once again, some of them are really bright, some of them are drab. And more, more, more Ranitomea. I mean, which one is your favorite? This is just amazing. By the way, if you follow me on Patreon.com, you could download this uh, presentation. That's just that. Another species, Exigidobates mysteriosus. The mysterious poison arrow frog whose name cannot be spelled properly. Exidobates, I would say. I don't know. I read all these names. I almost never say them out loud until the time comes to pronounce them in this podcast. But here, the mother Exidobates is carrying the tadpoles on her back. And then you got Miniobates. I don't know if it's named after Minia the legendary son of Godzilla, the gigantic monster. And then you reach the Haile Dae big group, and it's like the really, 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 really big group. But at this junction, we call it a day. Why don't you look at these amazing pictures of bright poison arrow frogs while we say farewell from the third episode of the CM Kozeman Frog Extravaganza. The reason I'm cutting it at this point is uh, twofold. One, I'm extremely tired. I just like spend a lot of time outdoors and I just need a rest. And number two, this group we're about to survey in part four, Haile Dae, is just so freaking big that it like if I keep on recording and, you know, I'm a systematic guy, so I don't want to stop until I reach the end. But then it would probably like fry my computer basically i would not have enough memory to record this in so highly die you're gonna see this all these frogs all these frogs all these frogs in the upcoming episodes that was that from the cm kozeman frog extravaganza episode 3 please support me on patreon.com and have a nice day goodbye